there are basically two different types of RVs. There are the kind that you drive, which are called motorhomes, and the kind that you tow entirely behind another vehicle. So I think first we'll talk about motorhomes. So there are basically three different classes of motorhomes, type A, B, and C. So type A is what we have here in front of us today, and that is distinguished by the flat front. It looks like a bus. Um, type A's can be gas powered or they can be diesel powered, and they can range in size anywhere from about 27 feet up to more than 45 feet. So lots of variations in a class A. The second type of motorhome is a class B. And the primary class B is built on a sprinter van chassis. So super maneuverable, easy to get around in, but still has all of the things that you would need to go camping. So a place to sleep, a small kitchen, and a fully enclosed bathroom, even in a sprinter van. There's a new type of RV or a newer type of RV that's called a B plus. And a B plus is similar to a class A, only it's built on a box truck chassis. So about 27 feet, similar to like the UPS vans that you see driving around your neighborhood. And again, fully contained everything that you need to go camping. The last type of motorhome is a class C. And a class C is distinguished by the cab on the front. So it looks similar to a pickup truck on the front and you have a bump out over top that has extra storage or a bed. So similar to a class A, but it has that cab on the front. And some people think that those are maybe just a little easier to drive. They feel a little bit more familiar because you're in this kind of truck enclosure. And again, they can range in size anywhere from about 27 feet up to more than 35 feet. The advantage of a gas engine is that it's easily maintained. Um, it's similar to a truck maintenance and, and you can take it to a, a dealer or a, a car repair shop that, that handles any kind of truck vehicle. Um, gas is also great if you're going out for a couple of weekends, a month, and, and um, are going to be going in, in relatively flat terrain. Um, a diesel engine is really meant to be run and, and so if you're going to be going up mountains or hills or if you're going to be doing that cross-country trip a diesel engine probably is a little better probably gets a little bit more gas mileage um, it's a little easier to go up those hills in a diesel engine um, but it does require a little bit more maintenance and diesel engines are really meant to be run more so um, it really depends on the type of camping that you're going to be doing which is right um, the one thing that's really important when you're renting an RV is to know which kind of engine you have. So it's really critical to understand whether you're renting a gas vehicle or a diesel vehicle so you get the right fuel in that engine. So if you're going with a company like Cruise America, Class C is a great choice because they're, they're a little smaller, they're easily maneuverable, it's a comfortable and familiar drive. Um, if you're renting from a company like Outdoorsy, where you can rent any type of RV now in a peer-to-peer -peer rental environment, it really depends on the type of RV that you might be interested in purchasing, and it really makes sense to rent what you're looking to buy. So you could even rent a Class B with Outdoorsy, where you could test that van and see maybe that's the right choice for you. First time out, maybe you want something a little smaller. Um, so that is a great option to, to rent that first time. Um, but if you think that a Class A is what you're going, going for, then absolutely rent that Class A. It's a great opportunity to try it out and see if it's for you and see how you feel about driving a big rig. So the easiest to get into a campsite is definitely a smaller vehicle. So a Class B or a Class C is going to be easier to get into and out of a campsite, no doubt about it. But once you get to the campsite, actually the larger the vehicle, the easier the hookups are because the hoses are larger and the space is larger. And so, um, so it really depends on whether you want the maneuverability in and out, which probably is best for a first time rental. You're probably better off taking a, a vehicle that's more maneuverable because you're gonna spend a lot more time driving. But once you get ready to buy, you probably do wanna think about something that's gonna be convenient for your hooking up and disconnecting as well. So there are basically two different types of vehicles that you would tow. The first is a travel trailer, and that is entirely pulled behind another vehicle. So a car or a truck that's equipped with a special hitch to pull the vehicle. The second type of towable is a fifth wheel. And a fifth wheel is actually um, hooked onto a special hitch that sits in the back of a pickup truck. So the cab actually fits over the cab of the truck. And those tend to be larger. The fifth wheels tend to be some of the largest vehicles, uh, the largest RVs, and also can be the most luxurious. 
because you get a tremendous amount of living space with a fifth wheel because you're not taking up time in the vehicle for the engine and the driving part that you do in a motorhome. So a fifth wheel is really a great living vehicle. So if you're going to be in Florida for the winter or Arizona for the winter, having a fifth wheel is great because again, you're not moving it a lot and, and it really gives you that comfortable living space. It's really fantastic. Um, we do see fifth wheels on the road all the time and people are, are constantly pulling them in and out of campgrounds. So I wouldn't say that, that people don't take them on weekend camping trips, but certainly if you're going to be living in an RV for a place uh, for a long time, a fifth wheel is a great option. Um, RVing is such an awesome type of way to travel and it really gives you um, a lot of flexibility and the ability to um, to change your plans on a dime and, and to get away from bad weather and, and all of that. I think the one thing that I would really say that I think people need to understand is, is the costs involved because it is, a, um, it is like any hobby, um, one that can be done for relatively inexpensive, but it can also get very expensive. So I think understanding what your budget is and, and planning accordingly is really important when you, when you go into this, when you go into this RV experience.